Hello, everyone, and welcome to this video I'm making in order to sort of make up for the fact that I wasn't able to make it to class yesterday. I do apologize, especially to those students who were signed up to give a speech, a mini speech, or a creative performance. It's not something that should really happen again. It was a sort of a fluke. I had some vehicle troubles and wasn't able to make it. So I do apologize for that. But I wanted to make this video in order to cover some of the things that we would have talked about had we had, we had class. It may not be exactly the same as when we're all together, but at least I can, I can deliver some of the information and get, help you to prepare for your creative performances should you choose to do that. And so what we'll be doing today is I'll, I'll be talking about giving a creative performance. And this is following mostly following what the textbook has to say about it. And then after that, I'll talk a little bit about evaluating creative performance and then evaluating an ARE. I made some evaluation forms to help guide our listening to our classmates as we're going through this. And so we'll actually look at some of those things in this video. And they're av available for download on ANGEL as well. And so to begin, I want to talk about some of the purposes for giving a creative performance or what the textbook calls a, an oral performance of literature. And one is to make a point. Now, often in other kinds of speeches, a persuasive speech, for example, a speaker will do some sort of passage, will recite some sort of passage from literature in order to emphasize a point that they're making or call on the metaphors in order to support their argument or just to set the mood for the speech that they're giving. So that's sort of the rhetorical uses of oral interpretation of literature or creative performance. But obviously one of the other major purposes for creative performances is to entertain. And that's really what we're emphasizing here at this point in the semester. So as you're giving your oral interpretation of literature or your creative performance, it's mainly meant to entertain. However, I will also say that the third purpose for this kind of speech is to practice manuscript reading. And manuscript speeches are not something that we tend to emphasize in a class like this, but it is something that can be very useful. A lot of people in, in different types of businesses, a lot of uh, politicians will, will give manuscript readings of speeches. And so that's a, a, an important skill to be aware of in oral communication. And so that's why, why we talk about it a little bit here. But if you are going to be doing a manuscript speech, I want to talk also about preparing that manuscript. And so logistically, you want to double space it. You want to have it single-sided. You want to have a big font. Some people number their lines or highlight some the even lines and not the odd lines. And that's just to help find your way from the end of one line to the beginning of the next. So that's something that, that you might consider doing as you are developing this manuscript in order to help you read it and not get lost and do a good job with it. And so as you're preparing this manuscript, you also may end up cutting if you're doing prose. Now, if you're reading a poem, don't, don't cut lines from the poem. You read the entire poem. But often if you're, if you're taking a piece from a longer, say, a novel or a play, it is completely OK to cut out some pieces or to start from the middle of a scene, for example. And if you are going to do that, as the book discusses, if you are going to do that and, and cut some prose, one good technique is to begin with the uh, just before you get to the, the dramatic climax of the piece. And however, if you are going to be cutting, or even if you're, yeah, if you are going to be cutting, you definitely want to make sure that in your introduction to your speech, you give the background necessary in order for your audience to understand what's going on, but also so that they can get a sense of, of how what they've missed out and what the mood is. And so I've begun talking about an introduction, but it's not entirely something that I've discussed previously. So maybe we're going back a little bit. But I want to talk about the introduction as part of the presentation and the performance. And so when you're giving your speech, you want to prepare an introduction. And that introduction should be off the cuff. You don't want to have it all written out on your manuscript. But you can have notes on your manuscript to help you do that. And the introduction you want to give that background information. And so, for example, you might remember when I read that piece by Utah Phillips, I described who Utah Phillips was. And that was also to help you understand what this piece, which is a very personal narrative that he made, what this piece is, is doing. And so it is a very personal piece. And therefore, if you didn't know who wrote it, it might not make as much sense to you. So I wanted to make sure that was part of my introduction. So your introduction, at least you know when you want to say the name of the author, give a little bit of background, uh, the name of the text as well, give a little bit of background information to prepare your reader. 
And so you're not just giving them information, though. You're also setting the mood for the piece. So for a very somber piece, you wouldn't want to open with a joke, for example. And so that's, that's the basic introduction. Once you've given that introdu introduction, you're ready to begin the reading. And so as the book describes, what, the way to do that and to do that is sort of well is to first like, take a pause, look down. You can look at your notes and get ready. And then once you look up, you're in character. Once you look up, you're looking at your audience, you're making the eye contact, and you're in character. And that doesn't mean you're necessarily going to be doing voices, competing voices in a dialogue. You can do that if you want, but that's not, the, not necessarily what I mean by in character. In character could be the narrative, uh, could be the character of the narrator. And so just basically when you look down, you're looking up as the performer, not just the person, not just yourself giving the introduction to the performance. And so you, you've done your introduction, you've looked down, you've looked up, you're in character, you give, you give your reading the best as you can. And then once you get to the end, as the book describes, kind of slow down as you get to those final lines. And if you remember, I, I kind of did that on my readings as well. And that, that is sort of one, one good reason to do that, is to make sure you don't mess them up. Another good reason is the final lines are often very emotional or very meaningful lines. And so once you slow down at those lines, and sort of that helps you emphasize them, and mark for your audience to pay attention and to figure out that the end is coming. And then once you get to those final lines that you've delivered in this sort of emotional way, then you pause, let your audience sort of soak in what they've just seen, experience the sort of emotional climax together, and then you can say thank you and go sit down. It's sort of poor form to get to the end and then just run away and go sit down. And it's kind of a lot of students, a lot of inexperienced speakers sort of want to just get off stage, want to get out of the spotlight. And so they'll sort of get to the end and run away. But you don't want to do that. You want to take your time at the ending and you want to pause, experience that ending together with your audience. And so I'm sort of getting into a bit of the evaluative side of this creative performance. And so I guess that's a good way to get into talking about the evaluation and the f evaluation form, or you might call it a rubric, that I've made. And so the evaluation form deals with three aspects of the performance, the vocal, the physical, and the emotional. Now, the vocal has a lot to do with the projection of your voice, but also the pace of your voice and its clarity. The physical has a lot to do with your movement, your body language, and your gestures. And then the emotional side has a lot to do with pace as well. But that's pace and how the pace of your speaking deals with the emotion and brings out the emotion of your text. Now I've made an evaluation form, and you'll see that on your screen. You can see that I've created a matrix here in which the speaker is evaluated based on whether or not they make eye contact with the audience rather than just reading, whether or not they project their voice so the whole audience can hear, whether or not they have appropriate control of body language, gestures, and movement, and finally, whether or not the speaker controls speaking pace for emotional or dramatic effect. And each of those is evaluated based on whether or not they seem to consider or try if, if you don't seem to consider a try, you get zero points. If you need a lot of work and it's not quite college level, you might get one point. If it's okay, I guess, you might get two points. If it's strong, definitely college level, three points. But very strong, like beyond college level, that'll be four points. And you can see also that at the bottom there, it says subtract one point for performance over nine minutes or under two minutes for the created performance. And then there's op an opportunity for the audience member to give a, a, a set of additional comments if they feel like it, identifying their strengths and weaknesses of the speaker. And if you look at the ARE evaluation form, it's similar in a, in a lot of ways, but the, the matrix is a little bit different. This one, instead of being focused on delivery, is focused on logic and reasoning. So later in the semester, you will be asked to evaluate your classmates based on both delivery and logic and reasoning. In these two assignments, they're, they're emphasized differently. And so in the evaluation of the ARE, 
the audience will be looking at the links between the reasoning and the assertion, the links between the evidence and the reasoning, and the credible source in the evidence, and the links between the evidence and assertion. And they'll also be looking sort of secondarily at delivery. And so, again, you have a scale whether or not you know, didn't seem to consider or try is zero points, needs a lot of work, one point, okay, I guess is two points, strong definitely college level is three points, and very strong, like beyond college level is four points. And so the scores that your classmates come up with in listening to and evaluating your speeches, those will be used to determine whether or not you get credit for that assignment or whether or not you have to try it again. So if you don't look like you're trying and everybody knows it, then then we'll be asked, you will be asked to give that speech over again in the coming days. And so those are the evaluation forms. There will be similar evaluation forms for the informative and the persuasive speeches throughout the semester. But these are the two that I assume people will be starting with. We'll be using similar kinds of things in the online evaluation as well, although it's not exactly the same. So these are the evaluation forms for the first two types of in-class speaking that you might do, the, the ARE mini-speech and the creative performance. And so we might even have some of those tomorrow, so that would be September 10th we might have some of those. People are signed up. And so I'll be giving out a small number of a handful of evaluation forms to people around the classroom and that'll be your chance to get going on this and give some useful feedback to your classmates and practice some important listening skills in oral communication. So that's all I have to say for the video for today. I hope to see you in class tomorrow. Once again, I apologize for having to miss class tomorrow. Uh, having to miss class yesterday. But I look forward to seeing you. So thanks a lot.